Hi, this is Chris Rudolph here speaking with Jo Brinso in her gallery on Maisonis. So Jo, tell us how you, how you got to San Miguel. Well, my mother came down for a visit, called me and said, hey, you got to get here. It's really fantastic. So the next well, summer, I went to Houston and, and drove in with my mom and my brother to San Miguel. And what year was that? 1976. 1976. Uh, just really, it called me. Uh, I just started photography at that point, and um, I was photographing. And, and, and really interested in photographing um, San Miguel, as mm -hmm. San Miguel. And what drew you, what images drew you to San Miguel? What, what? What images with your work drew you to San Miguel? Basically, people. I, I would... I had, a, I had a way of working that I would come down the first day and I would walk around without a camera. And then the next day I'd put the camera on my shoulder and I'd walk around, still not photographing, and really wouldn't start photographing until about the third day because I wanted to start to blend in and didn't, didn't want to be an opportunist kind of thing because mm -hmm. I was really interested in the people mm -hmm. and getting to know people and as a result, I, what I did is I came back over and over and over again over the years and I would photograph people and I'd go find those people again and give them the photographs and I'd photograph them again. So I have families here that I probably photographed over a 15 year period as kids grew up and the family. So you were coming down here on and off for years, you said, and yep. when did you finally move to San Miguel? I moved here in 1991. Um, I had photograph. I had actually taught, I taught one summer at the Instituto, and then I'd also taught one summer at Bellas Artes. So I, I, I kind of had a choice of what I wanted to do, but I love the atmosphere of Bellas Artes. I really felt that the students were treated well, the, the teachers were treated well, and uh, it was, so that w made me want to do that. And so I kept coming in, and I would be talking to Mark Carmen Receipt, and I said, I'm, been, I'm moving down. She, she had told me, if you, you can come and teach whenever you want. I said, okay. So every, every year I come in, well, I'm, I'm going to move here. I'm, I'm coming here. And she says, well, when you move here, you let me know, and you'll have a job. And so finally, in 1991, in May, I, I showed up at, her, at, the, at the office, and I said, well, I just signed a three-year lease on a house, so uh, I'm coming, and I was, I was back here teaching by August. And tell us what was life back then at the Bellas Artes as a teacher? What was the student environment like? Well, that was all dark room, so we had the dark room. I had anywhere from six to ten students. I, the atmosphere there was just amazing. It, the, the art there, you know, it, you just you, you would breathe it, so to speak. And of course, my students could be from everywhere. I'd have from Mexico, from Europe, from the States, from different places. It would it would be a, a multi kind of thing. Uh, we would we, we actually used to go out to Pozos. This was when nobody owned the property, and you mm -hmm. could go anywhere you wanted to, and. We would take models out there, and we would shoot, and uh, it was just, it was such, they were, they were month-long classes, so I, we, we met on Monday, Wednesday, and Fridays. And then come July, I would get a lot of the students from Mexico City who were mostly architecture, because they needed the photography for their degrees. Mm -hmm. So it was very different in July than it was the rest of the year. And like it is now, you know, in May there aren't that many people here, so the classes were small. And in January, February, March, the classes were full. Yeah. And what was your social life here? What was like a normal day here in 1991? Well, we had uh, we had La Fragua, which was the meeting place that everybody mm -hmm. went. And usually about six o'clock, and everybody go have a drink and. And then people would go off and do whatever they were going to do for the evening. A lot of times come back because they had a band there, that, and so there was dancing. And um, 
so there was another meeting place too that came a little bit later than that, and that was Virginia's. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Did you? I don't know if you remember oh, Virginia's. Of course, and of course. That also became kind of a meeting place for people. I guess there's always in the town. I don't know where it is now, right now, but uh, there's always this meeting place that people find to get together and. Mm -hmm. and make plans. And the artist community back then? Who was here and what were they doing? Well, in 76, number one, there was no TV. Uh, most of the people who came down, especially in the summers when, which, when I was coming, would be a lot of professors, a lot of artists who would come down here and they would work all summer and then take their art back home to do whatever they did with it. And it was neat because we'd have at lunch, everybody would meet at lunch, and you'd have this big table at Mamma Mia's. That was the, the where we went there, and everybody would be talking art, you know. So everybody would do their art in the morning, meet at lunch, and come back and, and, and go back and do their art again. And at mm -hmm. night, then pretty much go to go to uh, La Fragua. A lot of at that time, there were a lot of, of Europeans here, a lot of French, a lot of German. Mm -hmm. um, when I, by the time I actually moved here, that wasn't so, the, we didn't have that many Europeans. Yeah, no. Although now we're getting a lot of Europeans again. And so you ended up getting into the gallery business. So tell us how that happened. Well, I came down here, I had been running the international photographic competition in the state. So I came here and I got here and no gallery handled photography. None. And so I, I was doing the exhibition, and then, of course, I was work, then starting to work with uh, Carmen Massey on that. And uh, so people were sending in work from all over the world. And then uh, I, we did actually did the show at Bellas Artes. And it was kind of interesting because this was kind of my thing, the first year, mm -hmm. second year. The third year, actually, the uh, photo store in um, Mexico City actually sponsored it and uh, wasn't sure if I could use the space and I said to Carmen I said well you know I, uh, the Instituto had offered it to me and mm -hmm. she said no that's ours <laughs> so anyway we had we had the opening we had the opening the, mm -hmm. there at that point and that was the last year I actually did it but by that time I'm teaching and it, there's just so much going on uh, photographically and, but you ended up with your own gallery, which you've had downtown now for 30 well, years. Well, I did that because, and they actually, it, it, they actually helped me set that up because I started my own school and the gallery was, I, was started, I opened in 1997 as part of, the, under the umbrella of the school. Because again, there just wasn't any photography being shown. And I look at the gallery as educational. People come in here, I, I really, I like alternative processes. And so people come in here and I can go walk around and I can say that this is done this way, this is done this way. And I really, I really, uh, I really want fine art and a lot of uh, uh, detailed kind of work to go into it. So. And I still do that today. I, I actually have some of my own work here. And I, what I did is I, uh, that I did out at Geraldo Burial, and I did it, I started doing some cards, an addition of 10 cards, because I have young people come in here. I have people 19, 20 years old come in to the, to the gallery. And I'll go around and I talk about all the alternative processes and, and what, how things are done. Mm -hmm. And they get really excited. Well, they can't, they can't afford the wall, mm -hmm. the work on the wall. So I decided to do a series of 10 images for each, from each photograph. Because they could afford a 100 peso mm -hmm. card, they can't afford a $500 print, you know. Mm -hmm. And um, I wanted them to walk out with something in their hand. So if they got that, and if they didn't have the money, you know what? I gave it to them. Because they're the future of photography. Mm -hmm. I'm not the future of mm -hmm. photography. The people who are coming in here now are the future of photography. And I, I have no problem with uh, street photography and all, all genres of, of, of photography. 
but for me, I really want the fine art. Yeah. Well, let's go back to your original work here in the 70s, because you said that's what drew mm -hmm. you to San Miguel. So talk about, you mentioned the people, but talk about those first photos you took. What exactly were they? Where were they set up? Well, I tend to do, I, I'm a project photographer, so I did a whole 12-year project on Xochimilco, and it, it, which ended up in a book. I also did a, uh, about three or four different series over a period period of time. I don't I don't, don't generally go out and just shoot. I did when I first got here because it really was all about. And one of the things going back to that, I got here. I, one of the people I had studied would have been George Krause, and I got here and George Krause and George Conduras had traded places. And I wanted to use the dark room. Well, the only way I could use the dark room was to take the class. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden, George Krause, who I had studied for four years, was there in front mm -hmm. of me. Um, and so that sort of changed from where I. But he was. He liked working with nudes, and we were walking out. With, we were walking out, working out. We were going to places, and we would have three models. And of course, I, I'm still into the people. Mm -hmm. And I'm sorry, I, I should have. I wish I had the picture out to show you. But, you know, I finally did the one picture that was a hidden place in Bayes Artes, mm -hmm. and it, it's uh, all of, all the students were sitting over here working with these two models, and this one guy sitting on this wall, and it's, and it's back in the instituto, back where the 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 um, statue is. There's another door, and you go out, and it was this wonderful mural, and it was. This guy sitting on top of it, and it's it's with the cutting the rope, and it, it's fabulous. So I, you know, I, I did that. I don't know if it's still there, and we only got there because it was private, and I don't know if anybody yeah. can go in. So that kind of started it, and I I sort of live photography. It's mm -hmm. kind of what I do. <laughs> And what about, you had mentioned to me earlier about the churches here and the religious icons, um, and you got into that as well? Not so much. It's been a long time since I've really done work with the churches. I was interested in how the church and people's lives here. And of course, the Catholic Church here is very different from the Catholic Church in the States. Um, I do a project, and when a project is finished, the project is finished. Mm -hmm. You know, so that was really my first real project. And then my second project probably was working with. Um, I started working with uh, Xochimilco. Mm -hmm. So, what are some of your fondest memories from back in the day? Oh, I think just being here and being with people, artists, and and. The people here are just wonderful. They're really wonderful. And, and just being able to grow from one thing to the next, you know. And I love teaching. And of course, I, I taught almost 20 years at Bayes Artes. Mm -hmm. Well, let's teach on your, um, touch on your mother, because she was kind of a famous teacher from Bayes Artes yeah, as well, yeah. Helen Coffey. So talk about how she got to San Miguel and how she stayed. Well, she came on a visit. And she's the one that got me here. And then she moved down here, and she was kind of, she didn't know what she wanted to do, because she had had a gallery and everything in the States, you know, and all of a sudden she was here. And I said, Mom, you know, go talk, go talk to Carmen Masit. You know, maybe you could teach there. And so she did, and Carmen brought her in. So Mom, my mother was actually teaching here before I was, uh, on a permanent basis. And um, she taught till... She died, 89, 80 years old. She was still teaching. And uh, then, of course, unfortunately, she got dementia and we were, things changed. Yeah. But, but she lived to be 98 years old. Yeah. She actually, all, all the people that are students, which just were very loving, uh, were all gone. By the time she died, they were all gone. There was nobody left. <laughs> so. So you ended up marrying a local. Can you tell us about how that happened? Well, what, basi well, what basically happened is when I got here, when we came down to, to San Miguel, I was married to Richard, and he was the professor. 
and un- he died, unfortunately, he died at age 39, so he had already passed by the time I got here. Mm-hmm. And uh, I sort of knew Gary, I knew Gary for about six, six years before we got married. And I have to tell you the, the way he asked me to marry him. Tell I us. had the school, and I had a gal teaching a, a workshop on portraits from California. And she says, Joe, I want to I wanna use you as a model. And I said, nope, you really don't want to do that. She said, yeah, I do. I said, nope. She said, I can, te- I can photograph anybody. I said, OK. So I'm up on the model stand. There are about 10 students in the room. And she says, you're the hardest person I've ever had to photograph. And I said, yeah, I told you so. And she said, she turned to Gary, and she said, Gary, say something. And he said, marry me. My mouth flew open. She missed the shot. <laughs> you know. So about three days later, I said, "You aren't serious, were you?" <laughs> but that's how how it. But then we obviously we got, he was serious. Huh? He was serious. He was. He said, "Well, it came from my heart, so I think so." And how long have you been buried? Twenty-six years. That fast. Yeah. Time goes by. Or it will be twenty-six years yeah. in, in December. Yeah. Well, Joe, thank you so much for um, being part of the San Miguel Archives. Mm -hmm. We really enjoy getting to know a little bit Uh, about you. Well, thank you. And good luck with your gallery and your future projects. Well, I've been, well, this is, we start, I started this in 1970, well, the gallery, 70, uh, 1997. Yeah, that's a long time. I hate that when I go, that this goes. I would like to find somebody that would carry on with it. It wouldn't, of course, wouldn't be the same, but some her- somehow coming from the same place I'm coming from, because I really, it's educational and it changes, you know, it changes people's lives. It certainly changed my life.